Welcome to another episode of Productive Emacs. Today we're celebrating that I have 400 subscribers on the channel. Way to go. Um, and to celebrate, I want to add another video to the Productive Emacs uh, series. Uh, and this time I'm going to cover Emmet mode. Emmet mode is a uh, implementation of the Emmet protocol or Emmet, the web toolkit for web developers um, and one thing it does it is a very powerful way to edit uh, html hiccup uh, and css um, it's so powerful that it has a gigantic cheat sheet it just goes on and 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 it's unbelievable um, so what I want to do is just to go through some of the basics and um, so you get a feel for it and then you can decide if it's worth the time to take a look at the entire project itself. So let's uh, get started. I have some notes on this side. So um, all the HTML functionality that I show will also work for Hiccup and Hiccup is uh, one of the frameworks or one of the libraries that you can use in Clojure to uh, generate HTML code. So I'll show it and uh, let's take a look. So in order to use Emmet, you need to add it to your configuration file, of course. Um, as always, I use use package, uh, which just enables uh, the Emmet mode. It will make sure it's downloaded and configured properly. And then uh, I have this additional configuration to add it to closure as well. Um, by default, it binds to all the, um, the web mode uh, stuff. So all the XML, uh, HTML, SGML, you name it. Um, but closure, it does not do by default. So I added it. And if we take a look at a blank uh, HTML file, by just giving it a directive, in this case div, and pressing Ctrl J, uh, it will expand that to divs and put the cursor right here. So you could say I have some text right here. So that's that's basically the same thing that a, a YAS snippet would do. But if we make it a little bit more complex, let's say I want a div and I want some, uh, uh, I want to have a class name, and we expand that it will automatically create a class with a class name uh, on that div itself. But a div can also have a thing like an ID. So we do div and then the hashtag ID uh, dot uh, class name. And if we expand that, it will make a more complex div statement. It already saves a lot of typing by not having to do all the ID equals and the class equals, etc. So. But that's, that's just the basic. So we added an ID, we added the class name by using the hashtag and a dot. Um, if we want more elements, we can use a functionality called a multiplication, which does exactly what it says. It says, give me three, in this case, three of uh, the div. We press Ctrl J and it will um, and we'll move this into the your screen a little bit uh, and it will um, uh, create three elements uh, three sets of elements really yeah. so, um, we remove all this again um, where you can use this really well is to say I want to have an unordered list of three list items and we expand it and it moves into the first one, one, and then we can use the control meta left and right, and we'll move to the uh, edit points as they call it, which are the points between the elements themselves. So very useful, very good. And we can get quite creative with this. Say we have a div with uh, uh, a div some uh, class, Um, the, the greater than sign says this is a child um, of this element. So it has a div with a div in it. 
that has a class of some class. Um, and um, in that we can create an unordered list, which has uh, three list items. And if we expand that, then it creates the entire structure, all the childs, uh, so the div with the div with some class, with an unordered list, with three list items. Very good. Um, sometimes you also want to have multiple items at the same level. Uh, and there's two ways uh, to do that. So if we have a div with a div with some class, we can create a sibling, which is uh, the plus sign and say it's div other class. And then it will create one div, which has two children, so two siblings. But uh, maybe you want to have something in that some class, so div uh, other other. And what happens then is that the last one becomes the sibling of the other other class, which is not what you want. You want to have that at the same level as the sum class. So you need to go up in the tree and the caret uh, sign does just that. So it creates a, a div with a div with uh, the class some class that has the other other and then uh, at the same level as some class it will put the other class so you can create quite complex structures with this very condensed format um, there's also a thing called grouping so if we have a, a div of uh, my class and we want to have a combination of two elements so div dot sum class which has a div dot other class for instance and we have want to have that twice we can do adjust that so a div my class with twice the sum class and other class and that is done by using parentheses to mark a group of uh, elements that you want to edit as the same thing. So in this case, we want to be able to say, I want div some class, div other class to be there twice in that exact same order. Um, but once we have that, we might want to add some text to it as well, right? So uh, let's say, um, can we do this um, text? And then there's text in the elements, but what is even cooler, we can give it a dollar sign and then it will expand the dollar sign to the number in a sequence. And in this case, it will count from one to two to three to four, etc. So that makes for very, very interesting possibilities, a very neat way to edit, um, or to create actually to generate HTML code. And if we want to uh, create some hiccup, we can do just that. Um, there's this pipe sign that allows you to add comments as well. C for comments. And then it will comment every single item. But you can also pass it through other filters. If you're in uh, HTML, you can ex uh, explicitly say do hiccup and then you get hiccup. But if you have a uh, closure file already and you add this and you expand and it will format it as well and create the hiccup text for you. So the uh, you can use the same thing as you use for HTML to generate Hiccup classes, really neat. Um, let's see what I have more that we should cover. Not only does it allow for um, generating HTML text for elements, it also has some boilerplate stuff. So if we say HTML5, and we do Ctrl J, it will expand to an HTML5 document. So no longer you need to 
uh, add all the boilerplate um, text to it. You just have it, you just do div, div right here, and you say, um, uh, I want to have a div with uh, three divs in it. And there you go. You just go and build your uh, forms, your form groups, whatever. Um, there's more boilerplate possibilities. If we remove this, let's say we want to have a table pre-built that has that. Uh, if we want some text, let's say we want 10 words from the lorem ipsum, it adds it. It's a very nice um, setup. It makes editing HTML and hiccup for HTML very easy. And you can go all out crazy with CSS. Um, I don't do a lot of CSS, so let's um, take one example. Let's expand the style. And then we'll copy one example from the documentation, which for me, I don't, I don't do a lot of CSS stuff, but yeah, basically it, you would normally do say like say body this and by giving Emmet some basic instructions for instance in this case padding uh, one pixel to two pixels make it important give the margin of 10 m plus a, a border of one pixel color number two solid you expand it and it has created the entire CSS expression for you. And you can go all out crazy with the CSS stuff. Most of it, most of Emmet's uh, shortcuts are in CSS land. I don't really use it because I don't do a lot of CSS stuff, but if you do, highly, highly recommend it. Um, yeah, you can go all out crazy. So. That's it. Let's see how long we've been at it. Um, well, a couple, 10 minutes or so. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Uh, if you've not done so, click the subscribe. Um, you'll be notified of new videos. You'll learn new stuff. Um, so thank you for watching. Goodbye.